On a Friday morning from about five o'clock, a bunch of, of men, now, sorry for the ladies, but it's just a group of men. We gather here at Heinz office in, in Eiffel Park and, and uh, it's part of the CBMC group. And uh, we felt the Lord just kind of impress on our hearts to, to discuss an issue this morning, an issue that that we have found and discovered, I think, especially in South Africa. And this is the whole thing of forgiveness. So our focus this morning is forgiveness. And we're going to look into the power from the, from own Jesus' teachings, the power of forgiveness. I'm, is it okay? Can everybody see us? Yes, yes. I, can, I can continue. Yes, you can continue. That's good. I just want to make sure. I want to read it. A few verses for us from, from Luke chapter 7, where Jesus has been invited to uh, the, the house of a Pharisee. One of the Pharisees invited Jesus. Now, he might have had his own agenda, but Jesus came to his house. And in Luke chapter 7, from verse 36, we read these, these words. Um, Luke 7, from verse 36. Now, one of the Pharisees was requesting Jesus to dine with him. And he entered the Pharisee's house and they reclined at the table. And behold, there was a woman in the city and she was a prostitute. Some translations uh, puts the word a sinner. And when she heard that Jesus was at the table at eating in the Pharisee's house, she brought her alabaster flask with perfume. And standing behind him at, at his feet, weeping, and she began to wet his feet with her tears and kept wiping them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointing them with a the perfume. Now, when this Pharisee, Simon, who had invited Jesus, saw this, he said to himself, now this is his, his own personal thought. He's speaking to himself in his own heart and mind. And he said to himself, if this man was the prophet. Now, we need to understand, for the Pharisees, they remember Moses said, God will raise up a prophet, meaning the Messiah. And in this Pharisee's mind, he was saying to himself, if this man is really the prophet that Moses spoke about, he must have some revelation, meaning he's the Messiah. And he is supposed to know what kind of woman she was. This, this woman... You know, coming into his house, touching him. And then Jesus said to this Pharisee, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he said, you can talk to me, Rabbi. And Jesus said, a certain money lender had two, had two debtors. The one owed him 500 denarii and the other one only 50. And when they were unable to repay, he graciously forgave them both. Which one, therefore, will be will love him and be appreciating the most? And then he says, well, I guess the one that has been forgiven the most. And Jesus said, you're right. The one that has been forgiven the most. And then further down, verse 47. For this reason, I said to you, her sins, which were many, have also been forgiven. Therefore, she loved much. But he who has been forgiven little loves little. So what I did is, I looked at some of the Greek words that Jesus was using here. And uh, in Luke 7, in verse 42, where Jesus says to, says to Simon, he has been forgiven graciously, but much. And the Greek word that is used there for forgiveness struck me. And that's the Greek word charizomai. And I'm going to ask Guy if you can then the this thing, the next will go on. No, no, you are. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the Greek word charizomai comes out of the it, the Greek word. It, it, I, I assume you all can see the, the screen and the PowerPoint. The Greek, the root word of the Greek word that, that gives us charizomai for forgiveness is the Greek word charis. And when we study the Greek word charis, we discover it literally means God's enabling power or God's enabling enablement at work in me. 
Because that's what God said to Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. And charizomai is just uh, uh, another um, application of the Greek word charis. And charizomai, charis means God's enabling power. But charizomai means it's an ongoing, never-ending, it's in the imperfective. It's an ongoing and ongoing and ongoing process. So when Jesus forgave this woman. Jesus empowered. Jesus set this woman free so that she could do what was deep in her heart. But we need to understand the culture. In the culture of, of Israel of, of, of that time, listen carefully, women were not allowed to talk to men in public. It's taboo. Women would never even Oh, that a Pharisee or one of the religious leaders, the Pharisees, the Levites, and the, the guys from the Sanhedrin Council, they don't talk to women in public. A woman was, uh, uh, in those days, she was considered really, really a second class. She would not even come, come close to a Pharisee. She would not even hope one day I could enter his house. But because Jesus set this woman free because Jesus empowered this prostitute. She was suddenly free from culture. She was free from judgment. She was free to do what she desired in her heart. And because of the forgiveness that Jesus gave to this woman, the forgiveness, the might, she felt free, she felt empowered, and she walked straight into the house of this Pharisee, straight. Something, I mean, they could stone her, but she, she didn't care. She wanted to come and touch the Messiah. So forgiveness carries an incredible and incredible power. But for some reason, we don't realize and we don't understand it. And it's only God that can give forgiveness. I mean, our forgiveness starts when God forgave us and he, Jesus came onto the cross and you, you all remember his words when Jesus said, Father, forgive them. Forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. There's no religion in the world. I have looked at Hinduism and, 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 and well, Buddhism came out of, of Hinduism. I, I've read the Quran and I've read many other through part of my theological studies. We had to study a thick book and on the religions of the world. There's no religion in the world that teaches forgiveness. Only Christianity. Only Father God. The only, the only one that can bring forgiveness to us as humans on this planet is Father God. Reconciliation. Say again? Reconciliation. Yeah. Well, in the outflow, the, the result will be reconciling. Reconcile. But the fact... The fact that God came and forgave us, God empowered us. That's what charizomai means. Yeah. Okay, God bless my No matter what culture teaches, no matter what people and say, what no matter what people's view and opinion about us or you is in life, but forgiveness. Steps people free. And I can we go to the next slide? God forgave us to the or God's God forgave us according to the degree and measure that we forgive others. Forgiveness is a choice. God chooses, not because of who we are, not because of what we've done. God takes a decision. God decided. I'm the one who will, I almost want to say. I will introduce forgiveness to humanity. And it's God did it by choice. That's why forgiveness starts with a decision that you take in life. Not because somebody that you have a grudge against or even, you know, I've been married for close to 51 years now. And uh, I had to forgive my wife in this 50, almost 51 years. I think a thousand times. I think my <laughs> wife had to forgive me a million times. <laughs> But it remains a choice. Also, we have an old expression of the Okuya 
hy die sloor te gaan opgrawe. Mm. You know that expression? Yeah. To dig up the past, bring it back. Dig up the past and bring it into the, into the present. Forgiveness, number one, is a choice. Because God says, brings it, God introduces it. And then when you forgive, God chooses to, for, to forget. So forgiveness is not just a one-time thing. It's an ongoing charizumai. It doesn't have an end. It's ongoing. It's a, it becomes a way of life. Forgiveness. And then you forget what happened a minute ago. You don't bring it back. That's forgiveness. That's biblical forgiveness. And that the, the, the empowerment in forgiveness is, is you set somebody free who is in bondage. Because as long as you hold a grudge or you hold unforgiveness towards somebody, two people are affected. The one who's got to receive the forgiveness, in this case, the prostitute, yeah. she received forgave, forgiveness. And because of the forgiveness, she was suddenly free. I can now do what I, 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 I desire in my heart. That's why she could walk into the house of this Pharisee against every rule and norm of, of culture. She could come and touch the Messiah. She could come and minister to the Messiah with her perfume. Prior to this forgiveness, she was condemned in society. You're a prostitute. You're a useless. You're no good. Nobody. You can't even walk around in society. But here we find a person that had so much sin. So when God comes and he forgives us, he helps us. It empowers us to be ourselves, to start living a free life, but then according to what God has placed in our hearts. The one who offers, the one who forgives, the one who gives the forgiveness, guess what happens to you? Father God forgives you. Because if you don't forgive, if you don't forgive, Father God cannot forgive you. And this is the sad part. And when I was reading the scriptures, it hit me. It really hit me. And I said, Lord, I, I, I need your help. And I want to make a statement this morning. And I don't know how many people will hear this. But I think a big percentage of us South Africans suffer from unforgiveness. Some of us are walking around with grudges against the, the old previous government. What did they do to the country? They, they gave everything away. Just listen to the, the talk around the bride place, the bride place uh, 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 meetings. Or you have a grudge against what, what the current government is doing. You can't forgive. I know. You can't. We struggle. And in Matthew 6, verse 14, Jesus taught the disciples on prayer and, 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 and he the only thing that he repeats, the only thing from the whole prayer that we you traditionally know as the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You all know the prayer from great, I mean, before you went to school, you could even recite it. But the only thing that Jesus brings out of that prayer is forgiveness. Matthew 6, 14. If you forgive, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you don't forgive, your father will not forgive you. And in, Matt, in Mark 11, Jesus was teaching on faith and prayer. And he says, whenever you stand, Mark 11, 25, he says, whenever you stand, pray, Matthew, Mark. Matthew, Mark, Mark 11, verse but 24 and verse 25. Therefore I say to you, all things for which you pray and ask, believe that you have received them, and then it shall be granted to you. But whenever you stand praying, forgive. For if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also in heaven may forgive you. There is incredible power in forgiveness. And the more I, I, I meditated, the more I did a bit of exegesis on this and discovering 
that forgiveness empowers. Forgiveness enables somebody to do what they normally would not be doing. Obviously, I looked at the scripture of, of unforgiveness, and I can we go to the next one? The one who gives forgiveness finds empowerment. The one who receives forgiveness is empowered to do the good things in life, to be free, to minister to the people around you, wherever Father God's leads you. It brings enablement. That's the Greek word. I was struggling to come back to the word of, 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 uh, of grace, charis. Paul was struggling. And I think most, most Bible teachers have kind of given us a wrong understanding when we talk about grace. Grace is some favor that you offer somebody. Be gracious to me. You've done wrong. I mean, I, I think all of us or most of us have been stopped by a, a traffic, traffic policeman and say, hey, you know, you've, you've, you've overspeeding my five kil kilometers. Then you say, officer, policeman, listen, I wasn't really speeding. You know, be gracious. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not a criminal, you know. I don't steal and I don't kill. It's just five. So you ask for some, some grace. But forgiveness is on a much higher level. And that's what God said to Paul. Paul, my grace. I'm not going to take away. I'm not going to deliver you from this thorn in the flesh. Because the thorn in the flesh will keep you depending on me. Because my grace, by this you will discover, you will experience, you will learn what it means to live by, by grace. My enabling power. If we look at some more applications of the of this Greek word charis, we find in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and 14, we read about the charismata. In English, charismatic. The charismata, the grace gifts, meaning the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And as you study the charismata, charis meaning grace, mata in Greek meaning gifts. Every one of those gifts that we normally know or refer to as the gifts of the Holy Spirit enables me, enables me to do things that I normally would be, not be able to do. You can only do ministry. You can only live and be effective for the kingdom if you allow the charismata, the grace gifts to operate and work in you. If you realize and understand, I can't do it. A while ago, I was preaching in, in a certain meeting, and there were quite a number of people, and, 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 and people came forward for prayer. And I was praying a long line of prayer, and I'm praying, and I'm praying for people. And, and then I came to a young man of about 19 years age, and, uh, and, and I said, you know what, but can I pray for you? And he started you know, opening up his heart, telling me what he needs from God. But while he's talking, the Holy Spirit says to me, you can't pray for him because he has been going around and slandering and gossiping and spreading negative and bad stuff about the pastor. So I said to him, will you wait? I'll come back to you. Just wait. Let me finish with this line. And when I went, finished the line, I called him aside and I said, listen, forgive me if I'm wrong. But this is what the Spirit of God is telling me. He dropped his head. And he confessed, he says, it's true. So I said, I'm not going to pray for you. Now, how could I know that? It was only the charismata, the grace gift, one of the gifts of the Spirit that would speak to me and say, you need to help him. I didn't know that. I, I just saw him for the first time in my life. So I could send him back to his pastor and say, you go to your pastor, you confess, you make right, you ask him to forgive you, and he will pray for you, and then you will see the miracles that God will do in your life. Thank you, man. If we minister from our minds as humans, we will always minister there. But if we minister by the charismata, the grace gifts, and that's what the the grief, the the the, the grace gift, the, the charismata, the, the gift of the Holy Spirit is all about. The one who received forgiveness is empowered to do the good things in life, to be free to minister to the people around you, wherever Father God leads you. Mm -hmm. Nine. Now, the destructive power of unforgiveness. And I want to go to a scripture, which is Matthew 18.
And again, Jesus, Jesus is speaking. And Jesus is teaching in Matthew 18 from verse 21. Jesus is teaching on forgiveness. And then in verse 24, Jesus says these words. When he had began to settle the, the debt, people could not pay him. There was one who brought to him who had owed him 10,000 talents. And I was looking at the, 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 the value, the contemporary value of 10,000 talents. Guess how much money is that in modern day? 10 million US dollars. That's what the one guy owed his master. And I think Jesus was using this figure, which is an exorbitant figure, to make a point. Here's a guy who owes his master 10 million US dollars, but he's just a laborer. In other words, it's completely, even if I work my whole lifetime, I will never be able to pay. And that's what Jesus wants to say to us, to you and me, even if you work your whole lifetime. Meaning, you work for me. You say, Lord, I will lay down my life. I work for you. You can have my life. I'm willing to die. I'm willing to sacrifice. I'm willing to give everything for your kingdom. My whole life. It can never pay the debt you owe to God. Amen. Never impossible. And then he, he was forgiven. But then Jesus continues. And I, I don't want to take too much time. But Jesus closes this teaching in Matthew 18, verse 34. He says, and his Lord moved with anger, the one who did not want to forgive just a small amount. You can read it in your own time. Handed him over to the torturers until he should pay all that was owed. And here's the thing that hit me the most. If you don't forgive, not the devil, Father God will grab you and he will hand you over to the torturers. He, not the devil, not the one that you owe anything, Father God steps in. He's the one that grabs you and he hands you over to the torturers. And Jesus said, so shall my heavenly Father also do to you, each one of you, if you do not forgive your brother. Your brother. And then he adds to your heart. Forgiveness has nothing to do in your mind. It's not something you can reason. It's not something you can understand. It's not something you can argue and debate in your own head to justify or prove anything. If it doesn't come from your heart, there's no forgiveness. It must come from the heart. And unforgiveness brings curses and puts us in bondage. Unforgiveness causes Father God to hand you over to the torturers, and this doesn't have an end. Handing you over to the torturers, handing you over to the torturers. I feel sorry if God takes over in your life and He starts He starts dealing with you purely because you don't want to forgive. I have seen. I read a book some time ago. An American uh, a pastor. He's an Anglican. He's not even from the charismatic church. He's not a, you know, practice the gifts, pray in tongues, believe in the gifts. He's just an Anglican pastor. And, and he had a big church and, and he discovered so many people in his church are laying up in the hospital. People are getting sick, more and more people. And the hospital at one time, I mean, he gave the figures in his book, but a big number of his church members are in hospital and they, they can't get healing. And then he he went to the scriptures and he started praying. He said, Lord, I'm the shepherd. Help me. And God said to him, it's because the church is living in unforgiveness. <laughs> and he took a, he took a, he took a two or three Sundays, made a thorough study of the word of God. And he was teaching forgive. That's what he was teaching forgiveness. And suddenly he's still speaking in his, to his congregation. And people started jumping up. God healing them as they as they start speaking forgiveness and they became free. God healed them. Their prayers were answered. They had breakthroughs in their lives. And sometimes I counsel people on a regular basis. I have 
I've been in I've been in ministry since 1972. People call me and say, Martinez, you know, can I talk to you? And then we sit and we we discuss. And I wonder sometimes, are you still walking around with unforgiveness? Are you still carrying, you pray, you go to church, you give money, you read the Bible, but yet not much is happening. Yet you, you're looking for a, an intervention by God. And in the meantime, I think, just let the Holy Spirit come and put some light on your on your heart on situations that you walk around with and bring forgiveness speak speak forgiveness the moment that you speak forgiveness the person the person that you have righteous or that you judge will be coming free that person will become free and empowered and enabled because that's what you bring to that person but in the same time Father God does that to you. Because it's his idea. It's not our idea. It's not your mind. It's not mine. It's Father God's idea. Forgiveness. And he's the one who can bring it to us. So I just, I just want to leave this thought with you. That you look into your own life. I have a big question. Almost 80% of this uh, in South Africa. First the first time the war, people who get married, and don't bring feel condemned if you divorce and you're married again. That's not my, my reason. Why are we sitting with so, so high number of divorces? Almost 80% of first time marriage divorce, ended up in a divorce court. Second time, it's 85%, and then people start living together. But if we can practice forgiveness in our marriages, I believe. I believe that's my, my, my conviction. We will have less divorces. Parents can say to their children, forgive me or I forgive you. Let's live a life. That's Father God's mind. Let's live a life of forgiveness and see what God will do, even in South Africa, especially at the time that we live. So thank you. I, I appreciate it. I think Tinas maybe um, it's a good time for you to just pray for everybody. And those who feel that you know still have unforgiveness, that you'll just bring it to the table. Just lay it at the feet of Jesus yeah. and, and just give it to him. Amen. So Tinas, if you need yeah. us, thank you. I, I want to make a suggestion based on sure what I just said. And this is my suggestion. If, the, if you feel, if you get convicted, if you get convicted in your spirit, if, if the Holy Spirit brings something, anything to your memory about forgiveness, find somebody, find somebody to sit with you, then go to that person, because where two or three agrees together, don't just do it alone, find a witness. And say, I want you to come with me as my brother. I need to go to see that person. I need to make right. I need to clear. And I need to bring forgiveness. But let's, let's pray and ask the Lord to help us. Yes. Heavenly Father. Our Father. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Father, you came, the Trinity, Paul says, the fullness of the Godhead, the Trinity dwelled in fullness in the Son of Man, Jesus. Yes. Came to this world to bring us back to the Father. And the way it started is through forgiveness. You came you pay the price on the cross and you brought forgiveness so that we can become free, free of, of the bondage of sin, free from, from any form of addiction, free from people's opinion, free from so much in this life that wants to put us in bondage, rob us from, from liberty, even rob us from freedom to do what you want us to do. Only forgiveness can set us free and empower us. So, Father, this morning, 
I'm asking in Jesus' name that your spirit help us. Help us, show us, reveal to us maybe areas, issues for unforgiveness, anything. And help us to have the courage to deal with it. If we need to go to somebody that we still have a grudge against, help us. Give us the wisdom, the courage to deal with this so that we can become free, so that you can set us free and remove the torturing, the suffering yes. that so many of us are going through so that we can become healed, healed and free, Father, to live a life of freedom, to bring glory and honor to your kingdom, yourself, Father, we thank you so much. We thank you, everyone that's even watching on this Zoom meeting. Yes. Holy Spirit, speak to them. Yes. Help them. Yes. And thank you for forgiveness today. Yes. In Jesus' name. And all God's children say amen. 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 amen.